How's it going, everyone? And welcome back to Rangers Rundown. If this is how the entire season is going to go, with games being played like this, I'm going to end up with the highest blood pressure of my life come April. This game was annoying, but at the same time, I'm glad they won. Just a really annoying way to get there. So let's hop into it. Again, for, is this the fourth game in a row that Kako and Strom are out of the lineup? Uh, Kako's still on IR, and Strom's still in COVID protocol. Hopefully, they are back <clears throat> Monday night against the Flames. Uh, only the second home game of the season Monday night. Hopefully, they're back in the lineup. But the Rangers just played a perfect road uh, road series. Like, it was four for four. Like, they got eight out of eight possible points on this road trip. So... It's, they seem to be fine. They're not playing incredibly well, but they're still squeaking out wins. So uh, the lineup, I think, was exactly the same as the previous game. Panarin, Zibanejad, Kreider, Lafreniere, Hedl, Blay, Hunt, Rooney, Goudreau, and then uh, Baron, McKegg, Reeves, Lindgren, Fox, Miller, Trubin, Nemeth, Lundqvist, and Georgiev was in net tonight, <clears throat> giving Shesterkin... Uh, a little bit of a break. He's played well the last couple games. They figure Ottawa, if you're not going to play your backup goalie against a team like Ottawa, when are you going to play him? So Georgiev was in net tonight. To start the game, 41 seconds in, Paul scores a goal. And anybody who understands this fan base's general feelings about Georgiev, our, head, our head's just... It's going to be one of those games, isn't it? Because Georgiev did not play well against the Caps. And historically, Georgiev is one of those players that the Rangers seem to value very high. But I, I'm not sold on him being a fantastic goalie. He's one of the worst goalies in the league on breakaways. We know that. And... After Paul scores a goal 41 seconds into the game, you just got to think, man, Georgiev's just having a rough go of it. Uh, the Rangers had pressure first 30 seconds of the game. First shot of the game for Ottawa goes right in the back of the net. 224, Georgiev would get his first save of the game, and I thought that was notable since it's Georgiev in the net and not Shesterkin. Put down his first save of the game. Good boy. 4-13, uh, he had another good save shortly after Murray had two great saves. The time Murray was in this game, so the first two and more than a half periods of this game, Murray played great. He was he was going for that shutout most of this game, and the luck was just not on Ottawa's side this afternoon. 6.43, Norris would take a tripping penalty. Reeves drew the penalty. So again, Reeves, we're not looking for Reeves to be a 20-goal scorer because if we get to April and Reeves has five goals, I mean... Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. Yeah. So he's drawing penalties. He drew two penalties the other game. He draws one again today. So Reeves putting in the work on that bottom line. First power play looked okay. Second power play unit looked okay. Like, it wasn't anything fantastic, but, you know, it wasn't awful. 11.55, Truba and Tuchuk would fight. Um, Tuchuk didn't like uh, a hit that Truba had put on him. They had been kind of a little chippy with each other most of the game, and then about halfway through that first period, they just dropped the gloves, they go at it. And that, I think, is the first fight of the year for the Rangers, the first official fight, Truba and Tuchuk. 12-29, uh, Kreider would take a hooking penalty, but very good penalty kill um, on that penalty kill. 17-15, Baron would take a tripping penalty, uh, and it was against Stutzla, and it looked a little embellishy. I think the refs gave him the benefit of the doubt, and that matters, which we will get to at the end of the game. It matters that Stutzla looked a little embellishy towards the end of that first period, but the refs let him get away with it. A couple of good looks from Ottawa at the start of that power play. Uh, very good save from Georgiev about halfway through. And that takes us to the end of the period. Rangers, at the end of the first period... Uh, 12 for their last 12 on the penalty kill. So the penalty kill this year for the Rangers doing really well. Now we just need the power play to kind of meet them. Power play uh, was one for four tonight, so they did get a power play goal, but they're still not where we would like them to be. 
Penalty kills doing great, though. Shots 8-10 to 10 in favor of Ottawa after that first period. Second period, early chance for Kreider doesn't go in. Two minutes in, Formanton with a holding the stick penalty. There's a great chance early in the power play. A uh, good passing play to Zibanejad. Heedl had a good chance, but he missed wide. Good pressure. Ottawa just struggled to clear the puck on that power play, which definitely helped the Rangers keep the puck in, cycle it out. Ottawa struggling to clear on that penalty kill. After that, Ottawa had a good pressure. Miller blocked a shot, and he went down, and he got to the bench. He stayed on the bench. His head was down. He was keeled over. He was in some very clear discomfort. He wouldn't go to the locker room, though. He would stay out the rest of the game. 10-27, Lindgren gets scrummy with Sanford, uh, and the lines come together in a nice little scrummy, hey, how you doing? Two shots for each team halfway through the second period, so... Both teams in kind of a shooting lull halfway through the game, but that wouldn't last, at least for Ottawa. 13-20, a couple of good saves by Georgiev, and then after that, McKegg tries a wraparound that I, I was on the edge of my seat. I thought he was going to get it, but Murray did get his foot over to stop that. 17-16, Georgiev had a really big save on Brown. Like The crowd thought it was going, and Georgiev made the save, and then two more big saves right after that. So... My expectations for Georgiev coming into this game were very low. I'm not sold that he should be the backup goalie for the Rangers, but tonight, or this afternoon rather, he, you know, he kind of proved me wrong. So good for him. 1914, uh, Miller took a holding penalty. Uh, he was stopping a breakaway, so those penalties you don't mind so much if they're stopping a breakaway, but still you don't like to see that many penalties. Shorthanded chance for Zibanejad and Truba, 2-1-1, uh, during that penalty kill, though. At 19:41, Stutzla took a slashing penalty, so we get 4-on-4 four four for a minute 33. End of the second period, Ottawa outshot the Rangers 10-5 in the second period. Uh, Ottawa has 12 blocks already. Ottawa doing a very good job of just jamming up the middle of the ice, blocking shots, not letting him get to Murray, and the ones that do get to Murray, he is stopping with authority, so... Rangers at this point in the game after two periods, they're down one nothing, and they got to be frustrated. Shots aren't getting to the goal. They're not getting as much offensive pressure as they would like. <clears throat> but we come out in the third period, another early goal that Georgiev lets in, and this one was a leaky goal, at least as far as I could tell. A minute and four seconds in, Norris would score a goal. I really think it's one Georgiev wants back. It didn't look great when it squeaked over and went in. But it all started with a really bad pass from Panarin. I don't know what he was trying to do. He got it right over the blue line in the offensive zone. He was waiting for Zibanejad to get behind him, and he tried to chip it away, and it just bounced off of somebody and went out into the neutral zone, allowing Norris to just kind of take it and go in for the shot. 27-second power play, though. Um because Norris's goal was during that four-on-four four that kind of leaked over from the end of the second period. But the Rangers get a 27-second power play, and during that power play, Kreider had a chance um, to push it in, but Murray was able to get his glove on it. And shortly after that, Heedle got hurt and went to the locker room, which we're already missing our second-line center. Heedle's our replacement second-line center. Some would argue he should always be the second-line center, but I'm not here to do that right now. So Heedle in the locker room, your center depth is Zibanejad, Rooney, McKegg. Those are your centers if Heedle stayed out the rest of the game. And if Heedle did stay out the rest of the game, maybe the Rangers don't win. You need, you need good centers to win games. Luckily, he would come back about six minutes later. Still in some discomfort on the bench, but he was back, which was nice to see. Uh, about halfway through the third period, Paul and Blay would fight. Uh, Blay was going in for a hit on Paul, and he did a little reverse hit into Blay, knocked him on the ice. Blay didn't like that very much. So they kind of came together, and they had a little fight, and Paul was, like, they zoomed in on Paul's face after the refs got him back up when the fight was over, and he was incensed. He looked like he would have killed Blay if the range or if the refs didn't intervene. He had... He had murder in his eyes. It was crazy. And Blaze just standing there, just talking to him. You know, hey, how was your summer? Zibanejad had a couple of chances shortly after that. And then Kreider had another chance. Zibanejad with another chance. So Zibanejad's, he's around the net. He's, his 
shots are getting through. First six games, he only has one goal still, but he has several, several really good chances on his resume so far this season. And eventually he's going to break through into his classic Zibanejad form. 1348, Kelly would take a hooking penalty. And on that power play, Kreider would score a power play goal. So we are almost 15 minutes into the third period. And the Rangers finally break through with a power play goal by Kreider. His third power play goal of the season, fourth goal in total. Every single power play goal the Rangers have scored this year was from Kreider. So keep doing it. Uh, it was a Panarin pass. Kreider just had to tap it in. Murray went to the locker room right after that goal. Now, they showed several different camera angles. We know Murray has had groin issues in the problem, but he's also had concussion issues issues in the past. And when you watch the replay, he goes down to try and stop the puck, and after Kreider taps it in, he skates in front of Murray and his knee clocks him in the head. Now, it wasn't incredibly hard of a hit, but still. So Murray went to the locker room for the rest of the game. Forsberg comes in to replace him. 15-22, Truba took a tripping penalty, but Stutzla would take an embellishment penalty at the same time. Now, the refs let him get away with embellishment in the first period, but this time they would not let him. Ottawa fans went crazy. They hated this call, and no fan base is going to be like, oh yeah, he totally embellished our own play. No. So Ottawa hated the call, so instead of Ottawa getting a power play, it's now four on four. So Truba's in the box, Stutzla's in the box, and he's just shaking his head. 30 seconds into the four on four, Lindgren would score a goal. His first of the season. He did score the other night, but it was called back. So now he officially gets his first goal of the season during the four on four. Fox with the beautiful pass. You can always count on Fox for really good passes. Fox now has points in five of the Rangers' first six games. So he is continuing his Norris-level play, which the Rangers are going to need him to do if they want to continue on the trajectory that they are on. So Rangers tie it with about four minutes left in the game. 1757, Goudreau would score a deflection goal. Blay shot it from the point. Goudreau would deflect it in. For some reason on the app, they changed that goal to Kreider. It's not Kreider's goal, it's Goudreau's goal. Unless there was just something I completely missed, but I really don't think that's true. The Rangers score three goals in three minutes and 20 seconds to take the lead in the third period against Ottawa. I almost lost my voice. I was screaming so much. Every single goal. First goal went in, I screamed. Second goal went in to tie the game, I screamed louder. Third goal goes in to take the lead, I almost blew my larynx out. 1840, Forsberg to the bench, so with about 80 seconds left in the game, uh, Forsberg is pulled, Ottawa takes the timeout. About a minute later at 1935, the Rangers would take a timeout. And then at 1949, Kreider took a boarding penalty. Uh, it was kind of a rough boarding call. I hope the Ottawa player's okay. Um, but it was funny. Um, God, his name is escaping me. Um, to Chuck. Came over to Kreider after the boarding call and was just like, grabbed his collar and had his fist like right in his face yelling at him. And Kreider's just standing there, letting him push him down the ice because he wants to pull a call from Tuchuk. It was just hilarious to watch Kreider do absolutely nothing like in defense against Tuchuk. It was pretty funny. The Rangers would keep pin the puck against the boards for the final 10 seconds of the game, giving Georgiev his first win of the season and making this crazy fast comeback in the third period to win their fourth game in a row for a perfect road trip against Ottawa. It was it's just one, two, three, four, five. So five out of six. What is that? 80 percent, no, 80 something percent, 80 something percent of this game. I'm sitting on the couch just on the brink of just sadness watching this team get shut out by the Ottawa Senators. It, I... And then in the span of three and a half minutes, the Rangers win the game. So 
no matter how badly you battle, you can always lose that fast. So lesson learned on Ottawa's case, I guess. Shots, 26 to 28 in favor of Ottawa by the end of the game. Face-off percentage, 40% for the Rangers. Power play went one for four. Hits 45 to 33 in favor of the Rangers. A lot of hits in this game. Blocks 13 to 18 in favor of Ottawa. And the trivia question of this afternoon, besides Zibanejad, who are the only two players to score 30 goals for both the Rangers and Ottawa? Again, I did not know the answer to this question, although one of them's pretty obvious. If I gave it some thought, maybe I figured it out. But the answers, Alex Kovalev, who had 142 goals for the Rangers and 32 for Ottawa, and then Derek Broussard. Like, duh. That's who we traded to Ottawa for Zibanejad, and he was there for, I think, a couple of years. Should have figured that out. But Derek Broussard was the other one. 69 goals for the Rangers, 32 for Ottawa. The Rangers are back in action Monday night, finally returning home to the Garden to play the Calgary Flames. The Rangers move up to 4-1-1 one, and one to start this season, which isn't so bad. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like it, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next rundown.